This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Uh, the question before us here for our problem of the day is which figure has the greatest area? So in a moment I'm going to go through and calculate these areas. Keep in mind that this is the center of the circle right here, this little dot. So let's calculate those areas. I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video, calculate them, and then we'll get back to the answers. Okay, now you had a chance to calculate. I'm going to go through and run through all the answers. Well, here we have a triangle. The formula for the area of a triangle is the area is one-half base times height. So according to the formula, I'm going to take one-half and I'm going to multiply it by the base x times the height 2x. What does that give us? If we multiply all that together, half of 2 is 1, so x times x is x squared. So it's a 1x squared, or just plain old x squared. Okay, so that's the area of the triangle. All right, now let's do the area of the square. I'm going to put it right in here. Uh, so the area of the square area is side squared. So this is an s squared. All right, so that's how we calculate it. So the side is x, no matter which side, right? All four sides are equal, so it's just going to be x squared. So there you go, there's the area of the square. Wow, it looks like the square and the triangle have the same area. Let's calculate the area of the parallelogram. Well, the area of the par parallelogram is base times height. So the base we could see here is x. What's the height? Well, we have to travel over here, and we can see that the height is x. And that is the height. It's got to be a perpendicular height because for the square, that's a right angle. So it's got to be a right angle height, and that's how it has to be for the parallelogram, the right angle height. So if we multiply x times x, we get x squared. Well, look at that. It looks like the parallelogram, the square, and the triangle all have the same area. Well, let's calculate the area of the circle. Well, you should know the formula is area is pi r squared. Okay, so we're going to take pi times the radius squared. Now keep in mind that this 1.1x is really the diameter. That's the length across. I want the radius. Well, the radius is going to be half that. So half would be 0.55x. 0.55x. Now well, let's see if I could squeeze it in there a little bit better than that. I think I can go better than that. 0.55x. There we go. So what I'm going to do is square that. And also pi. I'm going to use the approximation 3.14. Uh, you know, I did say approximation. So the moment I take an approximation, I am no longer perfect. We are now getting an approximation, so it's 3.14. Uh, and I squared this earlier. I took the 0.55 and squared it, and I get 0 0.30. 0 0.30. Rounded to the nearest hundredth. And x of, times x is x squared. Okay, so I'm going to multiply those together, and I'm going to get approximately 0 0.95. So it turns out to be 0.94 if you use a calculator. If you used greater values, bigger numbers here, you know, you actually had more values here, more values of pi, it would be closer to 0 0.95. But regardless, Regardless of that, however many digits you use, it's still this 0.94 compared to the 1, right? Here's 1x squared, 1x squared, 1x squared. This is 0.94x squared. We could see that the 0.94 is less than the others. So it turns out that D is the correct answer. All three of these figures have a greater, just slightly greater area than the circle. So D is correct. All right, thanks.
Be back next week for another Problem of the Day.